In this video adventure, we're excited to take you on board of the Little Yellow Train or Train John and having a wonderful trip around the National Park of the Catalan Pyrenees. It is a journey that will allow you to travel 100 years back in time and experience in person the beauty of La Sardinia Valley with its infinite blooming fields and glorious mountain peaks. See all the old villages with the great fortresses and finally rush into the land of the magical canyons with its dense forests and beautiful bridges. So get ready to be amazed and fascinated as our wonderful journey begins. The history of Train Jean takes us back to the early 20th century when in 1903 construction of the first stretch connecting Villefranche de Conflant to Mont Louis started and by 1910 was finished. The extension to La Tour de Carole was inaugurated in 1927, thus forming 22 stations in total. This remarkable 63 km long line was built using the most innovative technology for that time and required building 650 engineering masterpieces, including 19 tunnels, 4 viaducts and 2 major bridges. The aim of the line was to connect the small isolated villages of the High Sardine Valley to the coast and it was the only available option at the time and was very important for the economy. Now we are departing from the international station La Tour de Carol in Wait, that holds Spanish and French railways and has one of the longest covered docks in Europe. And we are off to discover the colorful and picturesque Sardinia Valley, with its bright meadows, high peaks and exceptional flora and fauna. Shortly after our departure station, the train enters the first tunnel, Pla de Lora, which is known to be the longest tunnel of the line 380 meters. approaching the village of Ur, situated between the Spanish borders bounded by Puigcerda and Yivie enclave. Initially, the mission of Train Jean was not only transporting the passengers, but also the goods. Before the railway was inaugurated, only the stagecoaches had traveled twice a day, the chaotic and exhausting journey which would take on average 7 hours, so it had a very positive impact on the life of the region. Until the progressive closure of the iron mines of High Conflant, the ore, lignite, phosphate, as well as building materials like granite, slate and marble were regularly loaded in Villefranche, Sardinia and Joncet. It is also served for agricultural needs, transporting wood and even cattle. But this traffic will unfortunately gradually decline in favor of road transport, and in 1974 the freight wagons were definitely withdrawn. Nowadays, the railway is mainly a tourist attraction that contributes to the prestige of the National Railway Heritage and is a candidate for the UNESCO World Heritage of Humanity.
Another interesting fact about the line is that it is so steep that if it had been built even 15 years earlier, it would have had to been built using the rack and pinion system. But during construction, the concept of the multiple unit was becoming established, where instead of having one powerful locomotive at the front, the electric motors are spread along the whole length of the train. It was previously used in the Paris Metro and Metropolitan Railway in London. The wagons inside are conserved in their original state, except the small details, that were renovated for the greater comfort of the passengers. Each wagon offers visitors 40 seats, consisting of cars type MIDI and type North. During the summer season the yellow train has open wagons, which we highly recommend to take, as it will allow you to fully immerse yourself in the magical atmosphere of Pyrenees. Yellow train is named after its yellow and red colors, derived from the Catalan flag. Now we are passing by the San Lucadi station, where you can find the Ethnology and History Museum of Sardinia. We are going through the village of Ur, the perfect place to start your hike to one of the highest peaks Puchmal. Trenjon runs all year round and its schedules change with the seasons. Number of wagons can arrive from two in winter month and up to six in the high season in summer. In winter there are at least three to four daily trips and in summer it can go up to eight, with capacity to hold up to 300 people. Tickets can be purchased at station ticket offices or directly from the conductor for the majority of stations where stopping is optional. To take the train, wave as it approaches and buy your ticket on board from the conductor, who you should also tell when you want to get off. The whole trip will take you around two and a half hours.
2004, two modern panoramic rail cars of 90 seats were acquired. These trains are integrated into the rolling stock, alternating with historic cars. The total fleet is thus made up of 14 cars, including 5 open wagons and 2 modern ones. In our time, the train traffic is under the responsibility of a so-called line leader, installed in BF Ranch who has a radio connection with the train mechanic. Also, the computer system allows to permanently visualize the position of the train and to manage all the necessary operations. Today the snow is easily cleaned by the snow plows, but 100 years ago there were people equipped with their shovels who made sure that the line was clean. It was very common back then to see an announcement in a local newspaper stating the hiring of the laborers for this task. In the meantime, we are getting close to the Fonromel station, where the world's largest solar furnace and important research center is located. Also, it is a big ski resort and starting point for many great hikes.
and shortly after Fort Romeo we get to the highest railway station in France, Bolquer, which lays at 1593 meters. And now we reach the middle point of our journey, Montlouis La Cabana station, a site where we can visit the fortified citadel of Montlouis along with the first solar furnace in the world, built in 1949, precursor of the solar oven Odeo. Soon after leaving Montlouis, the train goes through the beautiful viaduct La Cabanas with its seven arches. Now we are approaching the engineering masterpiece and first major bridge that holds your breath away when you are seeing it, Ponges Clark. This historical monument was built between 1905 and 1909, and it was the first metal railway bridge in France. It was designed and developed by the genius Albert Gisclard, head of the National Order of Engineers. 873 tons of steel launched 80 meters above the bed of the Tet make Pont Gisclard a one-in-a-kind model that looks very elegant and weightless, it almost floats in the air. It was a true technical revolution at that time. The bridge represents a rigid indeformable system that still allows the metal to expand according to the voltage supported. The construction was carried out under conditions that were particularly difficult, mostly due to the lack of space on the banks.
Another curious fact about the importance of the trains in general is that our present concept of time owes much to the development of the railways. Before the 1840s, every town had its own time zone. Oxford's clocks, for example, were always set behind London's. You couldn't draw up a meaningful railway timetable under those conditions. Thus, the dependable railway clock became an important feature in our daily lives. We are passing by the station von Pedrus, where you can find the natural springs of warm waters, Bethel St. Thomas. Far off in the distance, we start to see another wonder of engineering art, Ponce Rune. It was built between 1906 and 1908 and finished one year earlier than Pontius Clark. Bridge was designed by Paul Serrourne, engineer of the National Roads and Bridges Department. 1,500 workers were involved in the construction of it. This great structure spanned the River Tet and Tue Valley at the height of 65 meters and had a length of 236 meters. It consists of the two floors and has 16 semicircular arches of different width and height that give this bridge an airy feel as if it was made of beautiful lace.
You may have asked yourself, why would a train need to cross the valley twice? Well, the studies had shown the real necessity of it in order to avoid unstable ground downstream from Pont Pedrus and around Lacassan. And because of the studies, we now have two magnificent constructions to admire. Now we're going through the Gorges de la Carranza with its incredibly steep cliffs, hanging bridges and breathtaking views. As we already know, the train is powered by electricity at 850 volts direct current supplied by a third rail. It was a daring and innovative choice at that time, when the steam was still in full swing. It was decided to build a hydroelectric complex on the River Tad, consisting of the Lake Buyuz dam and nine power plants. Water from the valleys is routed to the production sites by large pipes, which can be seen from the train itself. Each power car has four motors producing 300 horsepower per car. Overall, in the building of the line took part thousands of men, including multitude of tradesmen, stonemasons, miners, diggers, laborers and engineers, thus making it a real human epopee.
close to our final destination, the train reaches its maximum speed 55 km per hour, while its average speed throughout the journey is 30 km per hour. We are slowly arriving at our final destination, Villefranche de Conflans, where all the transshipments were carried out during the establishment of the line and where all the warehouses and workshops are situated. Also, there is a historical walled town and Fort Liberia Citadel, which is a must visit, as well as the caves Grotte de Canalets. We're out of the train now. It was a great journey. We're so happy we did it. Lots of beautiful views and not too many people. So we were lucky today. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it with us and until next adventure. Bye. And this concludes our wonderful journey on the yellow train. We hope that you enjoyed it and really felt the magical atmosphere of this trip. All the additional information concerning timetables and other details are linked in the description below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, so that we can create similar content in the future. Subscribe to our channel and hit notification bell to stay up to date with our adventures. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter as well, if you'd like to stay in touch. Hope to see you very soon in our next video.